So today we're going to talk about breathing techniques. These breathing techniques that we'll mention can be used in everyday life or they can be used on our work efforts. So first we will talk about the belly breathing. The belly breathing is very simple. It's just maintaining a flat chest while using your belly to breathe. It actually takes less effort to breathe that way, but it does take practice. So it's just a deep inhale through your nose, extending your belly, keeping your flat chest, and then exhale. The next we have the box breathing technique. The box breathing technique is a sequence of four with a four second hold. So you're going to take your breath, big inhale for four seconds. You're going to hold it for four seconds. Exhale for four seconds, hold for four, and repeat. That completes your breathing cycle. Nextly, we have the Riley breathing. Again, inhaling through your nose and hum on your exhale. This will extend that breathing cycle from six seconds on up to maybe double that. It's also known as the humming technique. And then we have the skip breathing. The skip breathing is taking a breath, inhaling through your nose. And as you get to that top breath, you're gonna take another breath on top of it, essentially getting more of your lung lobes charged with air, and then you're going to exhale. I want you to know that with the skip breathing, in the box breathing, any time you hold your breath, you are creating that CO2. And the only thing that'll help eliminate that is to breathe, to flush it with the O2. So all of these techniques here, the four techniques I just mentioned, will segue into our wheel breathing. So our wheel breathing technique is a technique that we're gonna use if we're under serious duress. If it's a non-self-extrication, we have to sit, we have to maximize our air. This is the breathing technique that we'll employ. Uh, from last year, we learned that a bottle can last anywhere from your Vibe Alert hitting it 18 minutes to lasting upwards of two hours. So more than likely, we're gonna get rescued within that time frame. Uh, claustrophobia is another thing that we need to mention. It's real. Uh, what we need to do with it and how we need to treat it, we'll talk about uh, in our packets. So if you uh, have those issues, feel free to pick up a packet that we have printed out for you. And that concludes the breathing techniques. All right, so we're going to talk about wheel breathing. Uh, this is something we reviewed in January during our SCBA class. Wheel breathing is a tactic for survival. Uh, the only time we're going to use wheel breathing is if we're running low on air, We've tried to self-extricate, we can't get out, and it's literally, I have to sit here and do nothing and try to conserve my air as long as possible, waiting for a crew to come get me, because I cannot get out on my own. So it's just a way to make our air last as long as possible. Think of it uh, as a 454 Chevy versus a Prius hybrid. You know, we have an X amount of fuel. We want to make sure that we can string that fuel out as long as possible. So the way it works, is our Vibe Alert is pneumatic and it actually consumes air to operate. So if we're stuck and we can't move, we don't need that Vibe Alert going off and wasting air on that. We need to conserve every bit of air we can. So this is just a tactic where we're using our wheel on our, our valve on our air pack, kind of as a diaphragm, and that's our valve that we're gonna use to kind of help regulate that air where we're not just wasting it. Because you're gonna find a spot to sit down, chill out, if you're breathing really, really hard, um, this is dang near impossible to do. So you have to sit down, chill out, find some kind of method like box breathing or whatever works best for you to bring your heart rate down where you actually pay attention to what you're doing. And the way it's gonna work is you're gonna turn your bottle off. And then when you're ready for a breath, you're gonna crack your bottle just barely. If you crack your bottle too much, it makes your Vibe Alert go off. Once again, that's what we're trying to avoid. So your Vibe Alert's your indicator that you've gone too much. So you crack your bottle just enough that your Vibe Alert doesn't come on and you get your breath. When you're about halfway through that inhale, you need to start turning that bottle back off. And then when you're ready to breathe again, crack it open again, get you a breath. When you're about halfway through the inhale, start turning it off. 
once you find the sweet spot in that bottle, it's only about a quarter to a third of a turn on how, on how far you have to manipulate this valve. Once again, if you turn it on too much and leave air in that system, your bibler is going to hit. Open it up, take a breath, halfway through, turn it off, finish sucking the air out of that system, exhale, and then just repeat. It uh, definitely takes practice. Obviously, the more we practice it, the more proficient we'll get. And uh, once again, this is one of those probably one in a million things you could possibly ever use. But obviously, if you ever get stuck in that situation, you sure be glad you knew how to do it to serve your air as much as possible. Now we'll cover our air consumption course. It's gonna be the same thing as last year. First, we're gonna start with our forceful entry sled. Everybody will hit it right-handed and left-handed one full length, not back to back. You'll hit it one way, then you'll hand off the hammer and someone else will hit it the other way. Once you've hit it both directions, you'll come over next and do the confidence course. So there'll be a smoke cover that'll be covering your SCBA mask. You can still see through it, it just makes it a little bit hazy. So a few tips and tricks when you're going up through the hole, remember to put your bottle back in one of the corners, send both arms through first, then put a bottle in the corner. Uh, it gives you a little more room. Next, you'll come up and you will do the slant or collapse prop. So here, the big thing is to get on your belly, send both arms through like Superman position, and then put your bottle up in the corner and just kind of inch your way through on your stomach. Next, we're gonna come to the low hanging wires. Here, you're going to get on your back, Put your bottle down in the corner and use that upper arm to swim through. Make sure no wires hook on you. And then when we go through roof joists, remember just go through feet first. We don't want anybody nose diving. Coming up next is going to be the stud simulator. Here you're going to send one arm and one shoulder through first. You're going to swim that second arm underneath to get that second shoulder through and stay up on all fours. Don't get down on your belly. And from here you're just going to crawl on through. If your hips kind of get stuck, just wiggle them through and your straps will come loose from there. But the big thing is to stay on all fours. We're gonna have you take your pack off just like we did last year. Uh, and we'll cover in a second a few tips and tricks on that. Just take it off, make sure you take it off of your left shoulder. Remember to feel the ground before you go out. There's been some line of duty deaths from people falling in holes. Keep a hold of your pack so you don't lose it. Then crawl on out and then we'll put it back in and go to the next thing. We'll cover both a full and a partial escape or removal. So loosen up your right shoulder strap, loosen up your waist strap, Take it off of your right shoulder and take it off to the left and just keep it onto your hip. That's going to reduce your profile. Next, we'll talk about a full removal. It's going to be the same steps as far as getting to this point. So once again, loosen that right shoulder strap, loosen your waist strap, undo your waist buckle, and then take it off to the left over your left shoulder. Take it off to the left. Make sure that that hose that goes to your regulator doesn't get wrapped around your neck. It gives you the most room. And go ahead and put your pack out in front of you. Some tips on as far as getting that shoulder strap loosened. You may be easier to reach across like we did here versus trying to get up to your armpit with the same hand. Next, we'll do the hose humping station. So we're going to have a coupling with a marker on it. We'll go one direction, a revolution or half a revolution. And then we'll stop and we'll turn around and we'll send it back the other way. Next is our ceiling pulling prop. So here what we're looking for is everybody to pull, a, pull some ceiling. And we're looking for a hole about the size of your helmet. Something you can stick your helmet through. That's kind of the standard we're looking for here. So everybody will punch their own hole. Next will be the dummy drag or the victim drag. We can do it either as a single firefighter or as a pair. If you do a single, you're just going to go one length from cones to cones. You can use wrists, pick them up, webbing, whatever you want. Um, if you decide to do it in pairs and just go start the cones, go down and then come back. Next is going to be the gear carry. So everybody's going to get one bundle of hose and a saw. So we're going to go up the stairs, back down, and then back up again, leave our gear at the top, walk down the catwalk, and we're going to hoist the hose roll up two times. So go ahead and hoist it on up. Just make sure you get that hose all the way to the top, top touch that top rail with it, and then go ahead and drop it back down. We'll do that two times. 
and we'll just continue that until everybody consumes their air and their vibe alert hits. As soon as your vibe alert hits, then the drill is over and we'll record your times from there.